Woman wasn't prepared for consequences of divorce. She wanted. I've been divorced for three years, and in that three years, I have spent most of my days figuring out how I can become physically, mentally, financially, spiritually healthy enough to be able to afford and take care of a child. And it just kills me. It kills me that I had embryos with my ex-husband that were viable. It's not just that it's gone, it's the fact that it was decided for me. Modern women are the first set of people I have seen who make life-altering decisions based on what they are spoon-fed by women who are not worthy to be listened to or based on how they feel. An average married woman is told every day to never settle for less and to get out of their marriage if they don't feel treated well. These advisors even say a man does not need to abuse or cheat on you before you choose to divorce. If you don't find happiness in the marriage anymore, it has become a cage so you can divorce and pursue happiness. It is funny to know that these women advising women to divorce are all divorcees themselves and are having a miserable lonely life, but they don't want to experience that life alone. They are trying to recruit more married women to join them in their plight. We are in a society where people are listened to because of their popularity, not because they are wise in the area they talk on. Even Mia Khalifa advises women on marriage, but she can't keep a man herself. Hey, it's Jenna. Recently divorced and kind of figuring out this new way of life. I was married for 23 years and with that person for three years prior. So for a total of 26 years of my life, I have been out of the game of dating, making friends, going out, um, and stuff like that as a single woman in her 40s. Yeah, I'm 47. So I've raised children. My children are adult children now. And um, it's kind of interesting because it's so lonely at this stage in life, life after divorce, especially with older children, because you make all your friends when they're younger, or at least I did. I met my friends mostly through my kids' activities. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I took them to practices, I went to school, all that stuff. Hey, it's me, Jenna. Recently divorced and <sighs> trying to survive this year. I'm gonna be honest, the random things that trigger me are the craziest things. I'm sitting in my car, literally sitting in my car, trying to pull myself together because I did what any mom does and I pulled an emergency drive to my daughter because she needed something and drove an hour because she's at college to drop something off and was just so thankful that like I could do it for her and fit her in my schedule and the littlest thing she said just triggered me and this is the second time in a week that my child has triggered me without even meaning to so we're getting ready to leave and she's like well I'll be home because we're I'm gonna be at the Clemson Notre Dame game because dad's gonna take us all you think that's nothing, right? Like nothing, right? And it instantly, like she instantly saw a switch in me. And she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing. Cause you know, I don't talk about that stuff. I don't want her to worry. So last week she says, oh, well dad said for Christmas, we're gonna go to Gatlinburg and be there for the holidays and do Dollywood. That man never once ever went to Gatlinburg or Dollywood ever in his entire life before he met me that was where my family always went that is i'm from tennessee that's something we always did it was a bonding thing and now that's what he's trying to do it's like he's taken every single tradition i've ever done and now turned it into his everything i've ever done the fact that she is triggered by everything that involves the man means that her heart is still with him and she wishes that she gets to spend that time with him, but she is simply a result of a lack of foresight. If many modern women who are now divorced and sad took a little more time to think about their decisions, they would have remained with the husband of their youth, so they could teach younger women that it's okay for them to fall out of love, but it's okay to find it again. This is what another woman has to say about her divorce. Many modern women have been told that it is all sunshine and butterflies outside their marriage, but they are not ready for the things that come after losing the covering of a man. Even Chad is there to teach them an unforgettable lesson. Is the one question I wish I would have asked myself before I left my marriage. 
And that question is, what if you could be happy either way? What if you could stay in your marriage and have the best freaking marriage ever? And what if you could get divorced and live your absolute dream in life and also have the best life ever? The reason I think it's important to ask that question is because I think it puts you in a position of power and abundance, right? Where if I can be happy either way, then I get to choose which path best aligns with what I want in my life. But so many times we come from a place of like scarcity and non-power where we think we have no other choice but to leave and we're not gonna have happiness either way. Now I'm not referring to like abusive relationships, so please don't hear that. But how much better does it feel to be like, yeah, if I could be happy either way, this is the path I would choose rather than, ah, oh, I have to make a decision because I'm miserable, you know? These modern women never cease to amaze me. You want him gone because you believe your life is miserable with him and you are unhappy in the marriage. But this is all because you have an ulterior motive. A man is lurking around the corner and now he is gone and he has found happiness with him figuring out that he was not happy by your side because you made him feel like he was the cause of your misery. And now you have helped to free him. He is happy and you are angry, jealous and want him back. Confirmed a suspicion that I had with my husband, soon to be ex-husband. We're in the middle of getting divorced right now. And we're not even officially divorced yet. And he's already sleeping with other people. He might have another kid that's not with me one day. We have two kids already. And that makes me want to vomit. That really brings a lot of disgust feelings within me. Thinking about him having another kid that's not with me. And my daughters having a sibling that's not from me it make it it brings a lot of disgust feelings and it makes me sad too but obviously i have absolutely no control over what he does and i need to let that go this woman got instant consequences because the man was not ready to play around and simp over a woman who was not willing to be responsible for making their marriage work. Notice that she never mentioned anything he did wrong. She just decided out of her head and not her heart. Now, she has to deal with staying awake at night, thinking about where he is, who he is with, and will she find a pregnant woman by him the next time they meet. Her loneliness and regrets have started even when they have not officially divorced. Modern women keep undoing themselves. They leave their husbands of years, who accept them with all their flaws, and go out seeking Chad. These women leave their marriages for a promised fantasy land, a blissful experience, thinking in a few months after their divorce, they would find that perfect man that would make them happy ever after. We have heard it said that women need to feel seen, heard, and cherished in relationships. And when they're not, they exit stage left. I was reminded recently as to why I made my exit in a particular relationship. I was with this person and we were in the same space and we had to do a thing. And I said, I'm going to get ready for the day and then I'm going to go for a walk. And then when I come back, we can go do the thing. If you want to get ready while I'm gone, then we can go do the thing. And he said, okay. And I got ready. In the common space we were in, I took clothes out of a bag. I took my get ready bag out, which he's familiar with these things. And I went around the corner and I did the things. I brushed my teeth, I washed my face, I got dressed, I put my earrings in, I put my face on, you know, I looked fresh. And I came out from around the corner and I put my bag back down, I put my pajamas in a different bag, the whole thing. And I said, I'm ready now, I'm gonna go for a walk, I'll be back in about an hour. I came back after an hour and he was still in bed. It's fine, there's time. And I said, do you want to get ready? And then we'll go. And he said, well, don't you want to get ready? When I tell you the wound he hit and the triggering, I have more healing to do around that. But it shut me down. I wasn't prepared for that. It probably seemed insignificant to that person. But to me, it reminded me of why I exited stage left. I was, I thought, clearly made up, 
dressed, ready to go. I had stated that I was getting ready for the day. I was ready for the day. And I looked at him and I said, I am ready. I told you I was going to get ready for the day and go for a walk. I'm dressed. And I found myself in that same cycle of trying to explain everything that he couldn't see because he didn't see me and he didn't hear me and it hit hard. It is so important that people in general are seen, heard, and cherished. And if you don't feel these things, it's okay to exit stage left because you will find the people. This is what happens when you are over 50 and you still think like a teenager. You see the crazy reason why she keeps jumping around relationships because you just dressed up and you went for a walk for about an hour and the guy who is probably busy with a lot of things tries to buy more time because he has got involved in other things since you decided to take a walk for an hour before going ahead with the plan. This is the advice they give to other women to find that person who sees them and hears them and I believe that even young women in their 20s know better than this. They know when to cut their man a slack. I am talking about the good girls. Now you need to see where those decisions lead her. I'm tired. I need a break. I need a break from all of this adulting out here. I need a break from all of this transition in here. I don't want to talk to people. Look at my eyes. I'm sleeping, but I'm not. I know transitions are a challenge, right? It's not all sunshine and butterflies. And just the mirror, the, the work that I've put in, and sometimes it doesn't even feel like work, but it is, it's catching up with me. I'm, I'm exhausted. This is the misery that her way of dealing with her relationships brings her. These are the consequences. She told women to walk out of where they are not seen, that they will find a jobless and irresponsible man who all he does seven days a week is check if she's wearing makeup or has her nails done so that he can say, oh, you look beautiful. Yet she could not find one for herself and I think she needs serious attention. That's all for today on Manhood. Remember to drop your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to hit that like button, click the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell to be the first to know when a new video drops. Share this video with whomever you would like to watch it with. Thanks for watching. See you at the next one. Cheers.